Jerusalem into the city of Judah. The pump ran in parallel with the pavement and worked as a standby. Gershom cannot have been built there because no human mind could have made such a city in all its glory. The liquid fuel operation plant was found in just one city. You see two-stroke engines constantly. They power weed whackers and chainsaws, model airplanes, boats, and all sorts of other stuff. The reason why they're so popular is because they have an incredible feature. For the power they produce, they are incredibly light. The key to the two-stroke design is a piston that acts like a piston, a compressor, and an intake and an exhaust valve. If you watch a two-stroke engine go through its two strokes, you can see exactly what's happening. Let's start with the spark plug firing. At this point, the piston is at the top of its stroke. The cylinder is full of air and gasoline that has been compressed. When the spark plug fires, it lights the gasoline. The gasoline bursts into flame and expands rapidly, driving the piston down with a lot of force. See this area behind the piston? It's filled with air and a mixture of gasoline and oil. As the piston moves back into this area, it compresses the mixture. As the piston gets near the bottom of its stroke, it uncovers a port. That port lets the exhaust gases escape into the exhaust pipe. Then, just a fraction of a second later, the piston uncovers another port. That port lets a new charge of air and gasoline into the cylinder. Now the piston starts moving back toward the spark plug, compressing the air and gasoline mixture so the spark plug can fire again. This cycle repeats thousands of times per minute. You can see that the piston is doing three things besides being a piston. It's an intake valve, an exhaust valve, and a compressor. Because the piston is doing so many different things, it makes the engine incredibly light. You can also see that the spark plug fires once for every rotation of the crankshaft. That's twice as often as the spark plug fires in a four-stroke engine. So not only is the two-stroke engine intrinsically lighter than a four-stroke, but it also has twice the power. The other advantage of a two-stroke engine is that it can work in any orientation. As long as fuel is flowing to the carb, this engine is completely happy to work right side up or upside down. While the four-stroke has to make two complete revolutions to produce a power stroke, the two-stroke engine only has to rotate once. Two-stroke engines are much simpler than four-strokes. Reed valves are small and lightweight. They don't need any mechanical linkage to make them open and close, since the pressure inside the crankcase does that quite well. On four-stroke engines, the valves are held closed by springs, a camshaft driven by the crankshaft opens the valves at the correct time. All of these parts add weight and take up space. So the two-stroke enjoys a significant advantage when you need a lot of power in a small, lightweight package. However, the four-stroke theoretically has the edge in fuel economy. The two-stroke is hampered because the intake and exhaust ports are open at the same time. This process is called scavenging, and we'll come back to it in a moment. The problem is that some of the exhaust gases get left behind in the cylinder, while some of the air-fuel mix gets blown right through the cylinder into the exhaust system without ever being burned. This wastes fuel and increases hydrocarbon emissions. On a four-stroke, the valves prevent the air-fuel mix from escaping out the exhaust, so the engine runs cleaner and uses less fuel. However, there's a better solution for two strokes. Evinrude's direct injection. These models don't have a carburetor. Instead of an air-fuel mix, they cycle only air through the crankcase, and fuel is injected directly into the cylinder. The injection is precisely timed, so none of the fuel escapes out the exhaust port. This dramatically increases fuel economy and reduces emissions.